Welcome everyone to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter and joining me as always is Tim. That's right. <laughs> I really, because sometimes you do a quote from the movie when you do your hello, mm. and I was really expecting you to do the, the intro to the video. I was expecting you to be like, uh, well, let's get straight to it. I'm here to be your friend. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I should have written something down, but it's, I, I mean, at this point, it's been a little bit longer for me. I think it's been almost about a week or so <gasps> since I watched it. So it's harder to remember. Tubbs <laughs> bragging. Uh, welcome everyone to the That's show. That's a brag. Uh, yeah, it's a brag. Uh, okay. It's a horror movie podcast. We get together, we talk about a horror film we've watched. It's really quite that simple. Mm. Uh, this was actually the winner of a, a Patriot vote. We have uh, the, the Echoes by Morning vote at our $10 tier, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of lets us sort through some of the newer VOD releases and sort of see what our, our fans actually want us to, to talk about. And the winner of the vote uh, for, for the month was Renapal. Okay, technically it was should have been done in October, and it's now November, but that's just live circumstances. Check out uh, recent uh, posts on Patreon and Twitter for uh, <laughs> reasons why. Um, but, so this is Rent-A-Pal. This is a movie about a 40-year-old guy named David who lives in his mother's basement. He is the, the stereotype of the of the sad, lonely man. <laughs> it's, and it's set in the 80s as well, which is, a, I think, a key point here. Mm -hmm. It's like 1985 or whatever, and he is using a dating service a videotape dating service where he's watching all these tapes he's sending in his own recordings and he's trying to get a match but he is not having much luck and he ends up picking up on a whim this tape from the the store it's called rent a pal and will wheaton is just this guy on the tape who's who's there to be his friend and like pauses for him to reply to him and and talks to him it's a psychological horror film kind of has deterioration and it's kind of based primarily around your hoping that he is going to overcome his demons and sort of like come out all right in the other end and the movie sort of you know tempts you with the tension of like you know is he going to do something here to ruin everything or is he going to uh you know succeed so uh but yes in a nutshell he befriends a man on a videotape which you know <laughs> may like at first it's like okay it's just a recording but is there actually something supernatural here where the, the person on the tape is not just a recording or mm -hmm. is this more psychological where his mind is is making up extra sentences or things mm -hmm. like that so uh that's the gist of the movie i will ask him the question of questions yeah. pal <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of Reddit, pal uh i thought it was uh um <laughs> uh it, it's tough because i i think it's like a pretty good movie like um there's nothing you know, like technically wrong with it but man it, it kind of made me sad <laughs> like I, I, <laughs> like because I, I i did think that it was going to be maybe a little light-hearted like kind of goofier i guess just mm. going on the premise you know like it seems like maybe something would be a little more uh wacky <laughs> you know, or, or something. But uh, when you watch it, it really is more of like an examination of this, like guys, like really sad and lonely life. And I think the thing that really got uh, me about it is that like, it's a very frustrating because uh, this guy, like, I don't want to say he's necessarily like a bad guy or whatever, but it, it feels like he's, you know, getting these opportunities to kind of like, break out of his rut and to improve his life and um you know it, it doesn't end up the way that like uh you want it to and then um you know i guess it's hard uh, without you know, being too spoilery but like i got uh like angry at some of the choices <laughs> that the character makes <laughs> throughout it i I'm got like, oh, like you idiot <laughs> you know i got anxiety there's a couple of key moments in this movie yeah. that were giving me serious anxiety because i was <laughs> expecting something bad to happen and you know in some cases it does some cases it doesn't but when i was like worried that something was going to ruin what was otherwise a good moment that mm -hmm. was healthy and potentially i guess you know if you're going to look at this movie from a psychological point of view and say let's say there's nothing remotely supernatural or there's nothing mm -hmm. weird about the tape it's just all in his head mm -hmm. i think one of the ways to analyze this is this kind of idea that he's been in this rut and then in his life for so long that it's kind of that like self-sabotage sure, I, I, i'm sure there's a name for this and i can't remember what mm -hmm. it is but there's something that some prisoners have when they're in prison for so long they come out into the real oh, world okay. and mm -hmm. they 
they struggle because they almost want to go back to prison because they miss being in prison. That safety of, of that mm. system. They don't even know how to survive in the real world. And I almost wonder if, like, kind of kind of similar to that in a weird way that he's been in this way in his life for so long and that the idea of he's too scared of actually taking the step to do anything else. He's too scared to yeah. be anything other than what he is. And that's kind of, I guess, you know, if you're going to call it, it self-sabotage at that point, then yeah, I guess it is. But <laughs> Yeah. N- not exactly the same thing, but kind of like Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, in a, in a little yeah, bit. yeah, kind of, yeah. Um, again, I'm sure there's actually a a, a phrase, like sure. a, a psych- psychological phrase for this, but yeah. Uh, surprise, surprise, we're not experts. Uh, so, <laughs> but yeah. like, uh, I mean, that being said, though, like, I guess, like, you do have to give credit to the movie that, um, you know, like, if I am feeling, you know, these things and getting that emotionally invested you know, while watching it, that I guess that, you know, kind of has to be a credit to the movie that it, you know, does a good job of making you care and suck you into, you know, like the premise and this guy's life and everything. Yeah, I think that's... It is, it's a weird thing because I agree. Like, I, I felt this at various points in the movie where I was actively like worried or tense because of what was going on. But at no point would I have said before that that I I, dis- I would never have described myself before that as enjoying the film, bizarrely. Sure. Mm-hmm. But I was finding myself feeling these things as I was watching, so it was being very effective. Mm-hmm. It's a very it's a very effective film, but it's not necessarily a pleasant one or ever a pleasant film. Yeah. Um, so. I, Which guess I, and I, I feel like if you if you watch the trailer and you know, like you look at the name of the movie, mm-hmm. you think it is going to be something that is more like maybe kind of schlocky or something and like yeah that it, it might you know be like a little goofier or maybe the guy starts telling them to do stuff or, or whatever you know and uh instead of maybe being a little more in- intense as it is yeah I, i've got other thoughts i want to add but like i kind of have to spoil the oh, yeah, ending yeah, yeah. to get give them oh, yeah. so <laughs> i'm yeah. gonna i'm gonna refrain from now but uh yeah it's yeah, I mean, it's fairly well done. It's maybe a little bit in the the longer side. You know, it's it's you know about an hour yeah. fifty, and it it does the pacing is there a little bit at times. But you mm-hmm. know, t- to be fair, like it focuses on the character, it develops it. It, I mean, it almost. I mean, if it's a critique of the setup, it's almost just it's a, it's a little bit too the classic cliche of a character, Espe- sure. especially okay. since I, I thought it was kind of weird how. You know, we're presenting this guy who's living in his mother's basement and you know, all, the, all the cliches that go along with that stereotype, but mm-hmm. very quickly, it's very clear that, well, she's taken care of, so it doesn't really feel th- th- like the traditional mm-hmm. thing anyway, but they still kind of treat it in the movie like everyone reacts to, oh, you live in your mother's basement, and like, they still kind of react that way. It's like, mm-hmm. well, yeah, but she physically can't take care of herself. He's he's looking after, which, to which point I did question that, why is he in the basement then? Like, it feels weird. Yeah, he's, that's uh, true. like why, why, why is he segregated in the house like this when he's mm-hmm. clearly the one running the house? He's clearly the one paying the bills, and uh, mm-hmm. maybe it's not his money per se, but he's the one clearly doing all the actual like operation and maintaining the house and the and all that. I don't know. Uh, it's one of those weird things where it feels like it wants to give us someone who's not just a complete mm-hmm. cliche and make us sympathetic, but at the same time, kind of wants to like feast off of that, like feast off of the the, the cliche yeah so uh it's a minor quibble it's not like a big deal but it's just something that i kind of felt as i was like some of the mm-hmm. details started to take form uh, yeah sort of movie and I, I will say everyone uh you know fits their roles pretty well like the oh. yeah the, like the main actor yeah does a good job and i think i mentioned it before like when we watched the trailer like i don't know there's something about will wheaton <laughs> i don't like that <laughs> he he just kind of annoys me and like um I don't know. Like, I mean, no, like, you know, I mean, obviously I'm sure he's like super nice, cool guy in real life. And if you like him, it's fine. But I don't know. He just kind of comes off a a little irritating uh, to me. But uh, I mean, I think he actually did a really good job in this movie. Like he, you know, fits that kind of character well. And like, yeah, when he was very, you know, light and like kind of happy and jovial and like acting like he's concerned about you, like it um you know it worked and then when he was also kind of like getting darker uh you know that worked too and uh and speaking of that too like the i do like the uh mechanics of the uh the tape like how they're able to you know work in some of the stuff like you know setting up lines that will come into play later uh you know and like work in like different situations and stuff because like yeah it is all like pre-recorded stuff but the way they're kind of able to uh 
like set some of it up. Uh, I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. The cast are mostly pretty solid. I, I think the main guy playing David, he has some really good moments. There's some moments where mm-hmm. there'll be like a little thing, especially towards the end. I think he does quite a good job with what he's given. Uh, I think, you know, the character of Lisa, who's introduced sort mm-hmm. of, this is kind of like someone who he potentially gets to meet up for a date eventually in the film, uh, which isn't, you know, I think that's not even a spoiler. That's, that's in the trailer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that side of things. Um, that that this you know this idea that there's a conflict then where, you know, it's like the the, the guy on the tape is getting jealous <laughs> of <laughs> of uh, and you know his name's Andy. I should mention that. Will Beaton's character oh, yeah, on the yeah. tape is Andy. Um, which I I almost wonder if that was chosen intentionally because it kept making me think of Toy Story. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, I'll be your friend to the end. You know, like see, I like my mind went to uh, Child's Play. Ah. Oh, look at me. I'm on the horror show. I'm going to show my horror credit because I thought of the horror thing first. Me, 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 me. Hey, I'm sorry. I mean, if you like Toy Story better, that's fine. <laughs> Wait. Friend to the End is from Child's Play, though, right? I'm mixing those lines up now oh, yeah. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> what is what he says something like that, though. I'm sure he does. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, something similar. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so, so somehow, somehow I'm right and you're wrong. I don't know how, but <laughs> somehow, <laughs> somehow it <Sure>. is. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, no, I, I mean, the, mm. I, I, it's weird to, it's weird, like, how much to recommend this. I feel like if you're in for sure. a miserable time, <laughs> <laughs> a fairly well done miserable time, yeah. uh, I, I think it's to be fair. But it, it's yeah, it's, it's it's almost a little too just sort of like real to yeah. be fun. So you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's sometimes you're like, oh, you'll enjoy this movie about a series of serial killing. You'll feel the thrill as he hunts down his victims. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's kind of dark, but there's this sort of thing to it. This almost feels like a little too like regular and real. Yeah, to 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 really mm-hmm. get, have any fun with it, it's just kind of a, a depressing watch. And, <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, I guess they'll and, be wary of that. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. And, uh, again, maybe it just helps more if you kind of know what you're in for. Because, uh, again, just everything about it just screamed, uh, yeah, something uh, a little more lighthearted, maybe goofy. And then, uh, yeah, maybe if I had known, like, oh, no, this is going to be a more serious, like, messed up kind of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you're prepared for that, it might hit a little better. But, um I, again though it's like yeah it's not like there's anything technically wrong with it like it's not um like i can't really think of stuff i can point out to with like oh well, like yeah uh the acting was bad or like oh they like it, it looked awful or you know this was dumb or whatever or the effects were bad it's like oh no like it's yeah pretty like solidly put together it's mm-hmm. just uh yeah <laughs> it's just not a fun time which and not every movie has to be fun but you know no, and there's some movies that I love that aren't fun. I love because they are like unrelenting mm-hmm. and and like miserable in different ways. But yeah, I, I guess maybe part of like not not having the right expectations going into it is part maybe partially why it feels this way. But uh, sure. again, there's something I, I I can't say till we get spoilers. But mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> just there's more. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I agree with the look. Obviously, it's set in the eighties, and obviously the, the mm-hmm. clothes and stuff are are there to like enhance that, but. It kind of achieves a lot of that feeling just because we're staring at videotapes a lot of the time. Yes. And we've yeah. got all this old grainy VHS tapes and um, mm. having stacks of, like, you know, recorded t- uh, uh, tapes, you know, stacked next to the TV. That does take me back to the, the childhood, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, we're old enough to remember videotapes. Um, <laughs> you youngins out there who barely even know what a DVD is, just uh, <laughs> know that once upon a time there was tape and you mm-hmm. had to rewind it and shit. Um, it was great. It looked... Picture looked amazing, sounded great. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I mean, maybe it answers this in the movie, I suppose, but I, I got a little mm-hmm. confused at one point when they're watching all these dating tapes and the the, mm-hmm. the ladies on the tapes keep saying, oh, I'm from, you know, so-and-so, I'm from California, I'm from Dakota, I'm from blah, blah, blah. And I kept thinking, I'm like, wait, how does this work if everyone's, like, living all over the country? Like, this is not... And <laughs> I guess, like... They say they're from those places. I guess that what that what it really means is that okay, they're all local enough that they can be set up mm-hmm. with each other, but they all just happen to be from from completely different places. So 
I guess that makes sense, but... Yeah, I mean, there's also people that maybe... I don't know, maybe they figure if you're, like, lonely enough to use, a, you know, a, like a dating, a video dating service that maybe you don't mind having a long-distance relationship or something. I guess. Uh, <laughs> it's just preying on your customers, I suppose. Well, uh, I, I mean, you definitely see that, uh, you know, this company is not oh, necessarily, yeah. <laughs> like... Uh, I, I, and I do like those scenes when he's dealing with it. And, like, yeah, you can tell that they... They're trying to act very nice and stuff, but they seem very phony, and it's clearly they just want, you know, their money and stuff. Um, but I mean, if anything, I, I maybe would have liked maybe some more of that stuff because I, I I thought that was interesting, and yeah, I do kind of want to know more about how this uh business operates exactly. Yeah, it was uh, it was, uh I remember the woman's name is Diane, who works at the company, and she's the one who's like there to take his credit card, like every time he's like getting a tape out, or is there to like submit a new recording, or mm. or anything like that. Yeah, and like the the thing I was confused about is it's like, it it's not like you just watch these tapes and then you, you know, see someone you like and, and just call them up. You actually have to go through the company. Like the company has to say like, okay, you're matched, and we can give them your information now. Oh yeah, that sounds like I mean, dating in twenty twenty is also miserable for a lot of reasons, but. <laughs> Uh, dating in the 80s through this service sounds like a million times worse because, I mean, there's a scene in this movie where he has to call up the server and say, hey, I wanted to check if there's been any matches and the woman on the phone has to be like, oh, I'm sorry, there's not been any since the last time you yeah. called. <laughs> like, so there's this extra person in the middle who knows that you're having no luck. <laughs> At least today, if you're on a dating site or whatever, you're the only one who knows yeah. that you're <laughs> miserably failing at, at attracting anyone. <laughs> so, and like, uh, yeah, and obviously, like, I, I would you know didn't do this when i was younger but like i don't know for i guess maybe from watching uh like you know like sitcoms and stuff in the 90s or whatever like when they would have this stuff on here i always thought it was like you do your little video and then you have like some type of number or mailbox that like people can call you if they're interested mm -hmm. instead of like yeah having to do that extra step of going through the person especially if like yeah the person uh like you know we have like one scene where you know like they're kind of almost like holding up the person like almost seems like uh like for ransom or something like no if you don't get here fast enough with the money like you know we're gonna give them to someone else <laughs> like that doesn't seem that great super manipulative maybe maybe it evolved into the 90s and that's why we remember it being <laughs> oh there's a specific number or whatever you, you contact yeah. the person directly on maybe they evolved that because they realized that everyone hated the uh the middleman <laughs> style of uh sure. dating um yeah. It's basically the corporate version of like, hey, can you pass this note over to Susie, please? <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, all right, so I, th I think we'll uh, give the spoiler warning so we can get into stuff. Uh, I will take this time to thank our Patreon producers at the time of recording, and as we go forward with the episodes, given that we're pre-recording a lot uh, for <laughs> an extended period of time in twenty twenty one, I shall emphasize that this is at the time of recording. There could be many more by the time this actually airs. Uh, but thank you to Tyler Hess, Cindy Palisades, David Short, Born Now, Al Tribesman, Christopher Moy, Brett Williams, and David Brown. They are Patreon producers at the time of recording. Uh, that means they are $20 or more on patreon.com slash TV, which you can go and support us over there as well for as little as $1 per month and get a bonus episode of Screams After Minute. There's a back catalogue, of course, of close to 30 episodes, I think, uh, at this mm -hmm. point, uh, which you can get access to. Plus there's bonuses for other shows, so go and have a look and see if you're interested. Uh, and helping us out, keeping all the content coming, and getting some bonuses. Also, you can support us for free by hitting the like button on YouTube. That was worth mentioning that. I don't know if I emphasize the yeah. like button enough. <laughs> Gotta help us with that YouTube algorithm. Gotta like, let us infest more people with our nonsense. <laughs> That's true. Speaking of infestation, there's a, <laughs> there's a cattail trying to sabotage my show. What's mm -hmm. the meaning of this, Tim? Yeah, it's just... Damien doing her cat thing. <laughs> All right, full spoilers for <laughs> Rent a Pal uh, from this point forward. Um, so yeah, we get all the you know t t him watching the tapes at the start. It was this really sad thing where like he watches a couple of tapes, and the first one's this really bubbly like girl from California, and I think the third or fourth person is like this woman named Susan. And she's basically, so she sounds perfect for him because she's talking about how she loves just, you know, struggling up on the couch and watching movies with people. <laughs> and his eyes like perk up and he, he leans forward and he's like, 
oh that sounds like a treat and then she seems really nice and at the very end of the tape she just goes oh and he, he shouldn't live in you know his mom's basement lol <laughs> well it doesn't say lol obviously it's the 80s no one said lol in the 80s but uh, like it was just this thing at the end it's like it's like this dagger to the heart <laughs> like he's just he's, he's fallen in love he's leaning forward and it's just like oh no 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 that's it take it away uh but he's asked to come in and film a new a new uh video because it's been six months since he filmed one so he comes in and he, he he records this like it's maybe like a minute long monologue and it's actually quite a good little monologue but the music gets really sappy and the piano's playing and he's talking about how like i'll just come out with that i take care of my mother and i you know it's and you know but i like doing it. it's fulfilling you know and my father used to always say this about taking care of people and it's this great speech he makes that makes him sound like an angel and then the guy at the camera is like okay can we do that again but like shorten it down to like 30 seconds so <laughs> then he tries to say the same thing again and he just sounds like a complete idiot who and it sounds it sounds terrible it sounds like he's a complete loser that no one would ever want to talk yeah. to and and it's so annoying because it's like all right uh, you got to give him another chance at, at that like he messed that second take up so much but they're you know obviously i guess they're just in the business of like yeah let's you know just keep it rolling and get the next person in here so they're just like hey man that's great <laughs> i was like yeah. oh come on let him do it again <laughs> Yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's, one of those, it's one of the first times in the movie we're kind of like, oh, God, this is going to be a miserable watch. Like, just watching this guy, <laughs> like... And it's as he's leaving, he sees the tape in the, the bargain bin. Yeah, uh, rent a pal, and he takes it home, and he puts it... And we should mention, yeah, there's a lot of scenes of him taking care of his mother, who is old and kind of senile, and, like, calls him Frank, because that was her husband's name, who committed suicide, like, about 10 years ago. And <laughs> he's frustrated, trying to take care of her, he's feeding her, he's doing all these things, blah, blah, blah. Um, but he puts in the tape, and obviously it's this recorded thing, and he actually turns it off quite quickly the first time, because it's just kind of stupid. He's, cause it, you know, he, he says something, and then Will Wheaton's response on the tape doesn't quite really work with what he said, so he's like, oh, this is stupid, and he turns it off. <laughs> but then he has more trouble with his mother, and he has more, more issues with that. And he comes back, and then he starts to really fall for it. And you know, it was like a, it was a montage of him. Like he plays cards with the tape, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he he really because he really connects with one of the earliest things is that Will Wheaton talks about how he, oh my parents were rough. My mom used to be like, you know, like she she spanked me so hard once I vomited all over the carpet, and <laughs> like he connects with that. He's like, oh yeah, I hear you, man. I feel you. <laughs> you and me, you and me, Andy. Uh, <laughs> but we get this montage where he's he's watching all this stuff. Oh, he's watching the tape, and it, it basically shows you him just doing various things around the house. And But one of the best things is that there's a moment where, and I love this in the sound design, because obviously mm-hmm. the whole time Will Beaton sounds like he's on the tape. He sounds like he's behind the fuzzy tape kind of like filter, and he sounds like he's coming from the TV. There's a couple of mm-hmm. moments where it changes, and it's like that effect goes away, and it sounds like he's in the room talking to him. Yeah. Uh, very yeah. intentionally. I was like, okay, that was a nice little touch to sort of really make mm-hmm. it start to feel like it's, it's, it's getting personal. Uh, so that's really good. Um, so there's a couple. There's actually a couple of scenes in this where we see, or at least it implies that uh, that David masturbates. The first one <laughs> is when he gets out like a film reel that says Dad's home movies, and you think, oh, he's feeling nostalgic about his father, who obviously is a big part of his backstory that he's he had this dad who was a jazz musician who committed suicide. Uh, but when he puts the, the the film reel on, it's actually just porn, and I'm like, damn, the '80s were. <laughs> <laughs> rough you have to get out film reels and <laughs> hook, up the, hook up the reels and put the screen up and all the rest of it um that is the more normal one though the other one of course that happens is it was much 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 weirder which comes after the big blow of the the plot which mm-hmm. and this is something you were alluding to earlier is that he gets a call from uh diane or whatever her name was at the company he's like hey mm-hmm. we've got a match for you her name's lisa you're gonna, you're gonna love her. You're perfect for each other. And he's like, he's like, oh really, really? Do I have to come down and get her? T- oh, okay, I'm coming. And he so he runs out and he bolts out of the place. Mm-hmm. And he's all excited. He's gonna get the tape and the form he fell out. And he's not got a wallet. He's left it at home. <laughs> and the woman basically holds it hostage and says, no, nope, you have to go get the. And I was thinking, so he goes home and I thought maybe something was going to happen with his mother to stop him from getting back. But he actually mm-hmm. gets his wallet and goes straight back. And I was like, well. Surely this is here for a reason. Like, what? Where, where's this going? I didn't expect the just the almost like darkly funny moment of him coming back in and be like, "Sorry, someone else matched with her in that last like twenty <laughs> minutes, and she's she's gone now. Sorry." 
Um, and honestly, maybe the saddest moment in the whole film for me is when he mm. says, "Can I get the tape anyway to see what I'm missing?" I was like, "Oh, yeah. I was like, oh no, dude." <laughs> Yeah, they make him pay for it. Like, it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is this is like the most depressing thing I've ever heard. Like, <laughs> oh, and he goes home and watches the tape. And not only not only does she seem nice and all that, but she's like literally like a, a caregiver. She she does what mm-hmm. he does, but she, that's her job. And she yeah. talks about how important it is to her. And Ugh. like, she's like perfect. She's like the most perfect person for him that's ever <laughs> perfect. And mm-hmm. it's just it's this depressing thing where he ends up. Again, going through more like tape watching with with Andy. And again, there's moments where it's like that feels like it was more specific what he just said. It wasn't just the canned response. Or sometimes mm-hmm. it's just as simple as that. There was more of a pause before he says the thing we've heard before. But because mm-hmm. of what's just, because of what David's just said or what's just happened, it has like a different context. So yeah, you know, it's this it's this and, thing. Yeah, and I get the feeling like uh, I mean, once we kind of get to like this you know part where he's like becoming obsessed with the tape that um it, it kind of starts feeling like he you know is purposely like starting and making conversations where he knows how to respond uh so that it feels like yeah you know, they're jabbing together he even gets to that point where he's mouthing everything andy says before he says yeah. it as he says it so that's like i mean at no point is this actually faking a real conversation here you you, you know and then uh, also so they play go fish and for some reason like because of the way the tape is like andy always wins <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. he makes them play cards and he always wins because of the way the tape works and because i was thinking as soon as he said let's play cards i'm like but like how like you've got different decks of cards because you're on a tape yeah. and he's here <laughs> and like, th- you always win that's just weird like it's kind of funny because some of the stuff on the tape feels like oh i i can see how that would work and then some of the stuff just seems like, all right, well, who would want to, like, put up with this? And, like, I, I, I don't know if we're supposed to believe every, everything we see on the tape, but, like, some of it is, like, very strange because it's, like, you know, uh, there's parts of it that are, like, oh, yeah, this is very wholesome. And I could see someone being, like, hey, I need a friend. I want someone to talk to. It's going to say nice things and stuff. But then, like, yeah, when he starts telling, like, you know, like sex stories and stuff. Like, it's like, all right, is this really happening? <laughs> or yeah, I mean, because that's what we're getting to. Obviously, is the other masturbation scene where yeah. Andy starts telling the story about how he was in college and he'd have he had like a conjoined bathroom, but he had his own little room to himself. And he talks about meeting this girl named Pamela and starts just basically just describing uh, vividly what having sex with her was like. And as he's doing it, the camera keeps cutting to a shot of like uh, David's lap. And his hand, mm-hmm. like, sort of starting to unbuckle and, like, go under. And so he's actually... So, I mean, I'll tell you this right now. I didn't think I'd be watching a movie ever in my life where a grown man <laughs> masturbates to the sound of Will Wheaton describing having sex. <laughs> that is not a scene that I was expecting to exist in any shape or form. But here it is. <laughs> um, and, it, you know, there's this dependency on it that's, like, really mm-hmm. extreme. Um it does feel super unhealthy it does feel mm-hmm. malicious and yeah like you have the questions like is this really happening or is it in his head and i, I was you know i was being kind of coy in the spoiler free section where i kept saying is it supernatural is there something on the tape and i think mm-hmm. there's a couple of moments early on in the film where he pauses it as he's doing something and it kind of feels mm-hmm. like he almost feels like it's like andy's staring at him from the tv mm-hmm. even though it's just kind of in your head but yeah there's no doubt in my mind having watched the movie and even from like after the first like 30 minutes that there is nothing supernatural going on in this movie. This is all just sure. David's head. Like, that's all yeah. it is. Uh, it's about obviously for spoiler sake. I was kind of saying, ah, oh, maybe it's that because the trailer kind of made it feel like it might be. So, right. I yeah. was I was being uh, devious. That's what <laughs> I might say. Um, but of course he gets a call. Lisa's date didn't work out. She's back on the market. Hooray for David. Mm-hmm. So they arrange a date. They go to uh, the skating place and. Uh, the the roller skates and he falls in his ass mm-hmm. immediately and he tells tells her the joke that he learned from Andy, which yeah. was a little sad. But she doesn't know that it's from videotape, so it's fine. Uh, <laughs> the joke in question for anyone who's curious was uh, as this old guy goes to the doctor and finds out that he's he's told he's got both Alzheimer's uh, and cancer. Actually, I said that the wrong way around. He's got cancer yeah. and Alzheimer's, and the guy says, "Well, I still have cancer." You know, uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's a it's a memory loss joke. It's, just, it's basically yeah. <laughs> um 
but they get a chuckle out of it. But they really hit it off. Like she talk because this is the thing. She talks about not only the fact that she's a, a caregiver. She talks about his what he's like with his with his mom, and she basically says, "Hey, you have to take time for yourself as well. You can't just be, all be about her." And it sort of gets to the idea that you know maybe that's why he's got such an unhealthy mind because he literally has just been like taking care of her and not doing anything else on top of you know the life that he has on top of everything else. Um, and that's where a lot of his unhealthy psyche kind of comes from. So. It feels like she is genuinely good for him, not just because he needs someone, but because like she actually has given him very health, like very healthy advice on how he like approach yeah. his life. Um, and they seem to hit it off, and they have you know take some photos together. Or he wins us some stuffed bears. You know the, the date is a complete arousing success. And she mm-hmm. says, "Do you want to you know hang out tomorrow?" And he's like, "Yeah, that sounds great. Mm-hmm. Let's let's do that." To the point where when he goes back to his car, he just yells the word "yes" like. <laughs> over and over again um yeah this is kind of what i imagine tim does every time he gets a pizza he just sort of gets back oh, to sure. the car and just it goes yes <laughs> yes 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 much, yeah. <laughs> no yeah that basically <laughs> now uh, there was um so it's not as bad yet but like even early on this guy was like really irritating me because like you said like this a woman could not be like more perfect for him like i mean this is probably like how you know it's a movie because it's like wow there's like (laughs) she is just absolutely like you know uh everything about her is just like you know um is like working on a level that is like you know what he needs but even early on there's like stuff that he's doing that's just like messing it up you know like um like obviously you get you know much more stuff later but even like early on in the date there's a few times like where she would say something and he kind of like not fully snap but like he would have like a little like no you don't understand i can't do that kind of like thing and i'm like mm. ah, dude like and, and, and the fact that she is like super like forgiving about it and like you know like i don't know it, it felt like there was like a lot of red flags like even early on this guy but she is very very forgiving yeah uh but it goes really well but when he goes back home and he puts on the tape, because he has to tell Andy about his date, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Andy immediately sort of has that toss like, oh, that sounds nice. Uh, you're meeting again. Oh, it sounds like it's getting serious. Uh, it's, uh, you've only just known this, met this girl, and you, you think she's this great. I mean, and obviously this is where you think, okay, this must all be in his head. Uh, yeah. All this stuff in the tape. And it's basically just saying, hey, I, th- I thought, you know, she's coming between us already. It's only been one date and she's coming between us. Mm-hmm. And basically it demands that he cancel the date on the second night so that he spends time with him instead. Mm-hmm. So you have this really awful like scene, and I say awful in the sense that it's awful to watch, is that he, ha- he calls mm-hmm. her and sort of makes up an excuse that his mother is not feeling really well and he can't go out that night. And it's like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> this woman uh, is wife material. What? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think this was kind of about the point where I started to realize, like, okay, what I thought the movie was going to be is that he meets this girl, she's perfect, they hit it off, and then, like, you know, Andy's just constantly going to be interrupting or getting in their way, uh, you know, while he tries to do stuff, but it's really not it. It's it's actually more like he's purposefully, like, you know, um, like, engaging with Andy and uh you know and like you know distancing himself from her uh as opposed to like you know more like him uh you know still trying to do stuff with her and andy coming in between them uh, I was, like... and i was still quite hopeful at this point because because oh, fate, sure, yeah. yeah. fate kind of intervenes right and mm-hmm. he, he because when he's so nervous about making this phone call he accidentally leaves the, the, the door open and his mother gets out and mm-hmm. he starts to panic and he's like searching for her out in the streets he doesn't know where to find her and he's about to call the police, but he decides to call Lisa instead. And it's almost like fake sort of intervened and said, hey, I'm going to make sure these two actually spend some time together to maybe, like, give him a chance here. And <laughs> Lisa like, volunteers to come help Luke, and she's going to help her. And not only do, do, does she, like, give him the suggestion that Lisa like, doesn't find her, because she's, like, at the bus stop, try- she thinks she's going to a gig that her husband's playing. And <laughs> not only that, but when, when she meets her, she, like, Lisa immediately says the right things to make her calm down and, like, gets her in the car and she knows what she's doing and she's, like, super calm about it. And they get her home and it's like, okay, they get her to bed and he's like, hey, don't you want a drink? And she's like, yeah. So And he takes her down to, you know, his basement and she's <laughs> nice about it. She's like, oh, that's cosy. And they're sitting on the couch 
and they're they're hitting it off and they kiss and they put their drinks down and this scene's actually really good and i i felt this was a scene where i felt super uneasy because i'm like somehow this is going to be ruined and then you start mm-hmm. to see that the remote control for the tv or that maybe the, the vhs or the, the vcr rather um is like it's on the couch and his ass is kind of starting to hit it is it you know as they're moving around <laughs> mm-hmm. and you know eventually his ass turns on the tv he butt dials the tv right and the tv's on and it's just like and it's that thing where there, we've seen this clip earlier on where he's quiet for a second and then he laughs right andy on the tape yeah but you know he stays quiet for so long he just is there he's watching them kiss for a while and you're just like you feel really but i thought the tension was really well handled i was really into the scene and really like dreading how this was going to wrap up and mm-hmm. it ends up being that her hand's starting to go up his leg and he basically climaxes right he's, he's not expecting it and he's he gets excited <laughs> And as soon as he climaxes, Andy starts laughing maniacally on the tape. And mm-hmm. it's kind of this thing. And it kind of ties in. We, we kind of glossed over. There's a story that he told at one point, Andy, you know, before the, the first date, he he t- tells a story of the, how he was embarrassed in school where he was into this girl in, like, I think it was the sixth grade or something like that. It was, yeah, it was young. It was... Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds yeah, about right. Uh, like, yeah, um, And he sent a note to a girl saying something uh and the girl smiled and it seemed like it was like a you know it was going well but billy's in the class saw this happening and started sending her notes signing it with his name uh saying things like i want to have sex with you show me your tits Mm -hmm. you know more more gratuitous stuff and i think this is obviously a big part of the movie as well is the, the psyche of this character as much as we're saying that there's a lot of sympathy and you're hoping that he's going to turn out okay and you're hoping that he's going to make the right choices uh, which he ultimately never does. Like, and that's maybe one of the problems with the movie is that it's a really dark downer of an ending where he doesn't get over anything. He does the worst things possible and ends up just miserably dying alone. But <laughs> the, the 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 red flags in terms of his psyche though tend to be rooted in how he he sort of blames his mother for sort of overtaking his life and always being mm. this way with him, like being too harsh and obviously being there and being like a burden to him now. But even the idea that he he felt betrayed from this girl in school because this girl knew that he wasn't writing all these notes. She she knew that he only wrote the first one and that he wasn't being the creep who was doing all this stuff, but she never spoke up in his defense and said, this wasn't him. She let him take the, the fall and he got suspended and his mother gave him out of trouble. And you get the idea that there's this kind of almost feeling of mistrust and resentment from him uh, mm-hmm. towards women because of this uh, from this early age. Um, and that's kind of something that comes you know through the tape is the idea that Andy starts to accuse him of, like, Lisa getting in the way, so he then tries to shut her out because he feels like he is trusting the wrong person. So he's, he's like, res- rescinding and coming back to Andy. So the psychology stuff is kind of there, and it, it kind of works. So this moment here where Andy laughs at him um, and he feels embarrassed in front of her, even though she's not done anything wrong, and she's actually, you know, is understanding and tries to be nice about it. Um, yeah. And just asks about what this weird tape is, and he gets upset and says, "Oh, you wouldn't understand. You should probably mm-hmm. go." Um, and you know, at this point, I'm thinking she should probably be thinking, "Okay, maybe this guy's a weirdo. I should probably like not come back." But she actually calls Absolutely. him the next day and says, <laughs> "Hey, you know, I want to apologize. I'm not really sure what for, to be honest, but it, is, it feels weird mm-hmm. to fight over a tape, and I think we're hunting it off." And blah, blah, blah. She, she's super nice. Like, my God, David, she's you feel far too nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, actually. I forgot I mentioned the weirdest thing about the scene where he's masturbating to the, the sex story is that yeah. eventually Will Wheaton starts using the name David when he's talking about it. When, he, when he's quoting, like, mm-hmm. uh, was it Pamela? He's like, oh, F me, oh, David. Yeah, yeah. F me. F me, David. <laughs> Keep going, David. <laughs> but that was just the, the, that was the, the really weird part. <laughs> yeah. And then his, uh, and his mom comes in at the end of the scene, too. That's true, yeah, yeah. The mom yeah. comes in and <laughs> thinks it's her husband and calls him, like, a, a pervert for masturbating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so not only is he embarrassed because he's been caught, he then has to kind of like awkwardly yell at her and say, "I'm not your husband, damn it! Like I'm, yeah. I'm your son." Um, so yeah, I, I mean, maybe this is the, also the idea. He's, he's he's always been overlooked, or at least he feels that he's overlooked by her as well because yeah. she's constantly mistaking him for her husband. And is, is that the scene too where he gets like really in her face and he says like, "Yeah, I'm not." You know, I'm not dad. Dad killed himself, like, because mm-hmm. of you. <laughs> like, which is just, like, you know, really harsh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he says because of you until later. He may, okay. that, that mm-hmm. may not be until he eventually pushes her down the stairs. Mm-hmm. Oh, Cause okay. Because okay. he definitely says it there. He kind of whispers it in her ear. 
uh, mm-hmm. before he does. Which is what this is building up to, is that he gets mad at her because his mum then, like, thinking that the tape is actually, like, you know, sellotape or sticky tape, uh, mm-hmm. basically ruins the rent-a-pal tape. And he freaks out and he's looking around. So we have this scene where he goes to the, the, the dating service place and he's like, hey, where's the tape that you sold me? The rent a pal, I did another copy. And, he, you know, he kicks over a bin of tapes and everyone's like freaking, you know, everyone's like on edge and they don't know how to take him. Mm-hmm. To the point where uh, Diane like lets him take it for free. She's like, no, it's on the house. You you, you take rent a pal. And he, yeah. takes, he takes two copies. And I think uh, and before he leaves, he hits his mom with the tape and she falls to the ground. Oh, you're right. That's before he leaves. Which... You're right. Yeah. And and they kind of like every now and again they cut back to her on the floor and like this is one of those moments that like you were kind of mentioning earlier like where it gets too real like this is something that was like okay we're not in the like fun horror movie kind of sense anymore uh you know where like you want to see like the gore or something like this this was like an old lady suffering from like dementia on the floor constantly crying with like. A big wound on her cheek and like oh, this is just like so hard to watch yeah it's, it's, and it's not so much that I, I think the character's presented in a way that he's not just this like obviously someone who's been down a dark path the whole time there's kind of like you do what you hope that he's going to make the right choices that he's going to be a good person that he's going to take the right lessons from things and like take these these options that are presented to him to improve himself and and have a better mm-hmm. life and, and move on and and do other things and he doesn't but not only that, like, because I, cause I thought at this point, okay, this is going to be about how he neglects her and she's going to end up dying on the floor because he's too busy obsessing yeah. with the tape. And it's mm-hmm. actually worse than that. He, you know, he gets her up <laughs> at one point and pushes her down the stairs and says, hey, you're why dad killed himself. Um, And this is after he watches the tape and like, Andy's like, hey, we don't need her anymore. You've got me. Mm-hmm. You don't need her. Mums are terrible. And, <laughs> you know, he, he, he shoves her down the stairs. and It's a super dark scene and... Although I, I do actually like the moment it comes afterwards where because Andy starts playing all the TVs in the house, like around mm-hmm. the house, he starts playing everywhere and he ends up in the bathroom and he get or not the bathroom, sorry, in the living room and Andy starts mouthing it word for word and probably my favourite moment from his performance in the entire movie is when Andy says, you know, how about we, you know, do something, you know, how about we get weird or something like that and it cuts to... Uh, to david and he just kind of looks down sort of an angle and says sounds effing weird andy and he says it with this like sort of like tone it's, it's like yeah he's he's just that's him he's he's oh, he's like gone he's in like crazy cuckoo land and there's no co- so after this all he says now are quotes from the tape because lisa yeah. appears behind him she's brought a lasagna she wants to make amends he's like i've been brought down for you and your mother i want to patch things up and he just like says things that andy says on the tape to her he says you know that's what friends are for um blah 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 you know he just he repeats things that, he, that were said on the tape and to the point and you know i actually really like the shot of the lasagna hitting the floor because it kind of just yeah. falls straight down and the, and the dish just smashes and the lasagna just goes splat and mm-hmm. she sort of backs away and she's like and she hears the moaning and she she runs over to the basement door and she's like wait oh my mm-hmm. god you know david what did you do and then he you know he he grabs her she's slipping on the lasagna and he, he strangles her now, he doesn't kill her. She gets away. She manages to get out. Uh, uh, and she stabs him, literally in the heart, which I thought was an interesting visual touch, <laughs> was that he does get stabbed in the heart by Lisa. Um, mm-hmm. And and it's this idea that he sees this as evil, that like she's being evil by what, what she's doing to him, even though she's just defended herself and she's the one that's... The, yeah. She's the saint. She's been a saint this entire time in this movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, and mm-hmm. she runs out asking for help, and the movie ends with David going down into the basement, and basically saying goodbye to Andy, where Andy says, oh, so this is it? This is the end? And he's like, well, I guess all good things must come to an end. And they say goodbye to each other as he's, like, sitting there dying. And so the thing I was wanted to say earlier on that I never really got to was that, like, I, I, I do wonder if this movie actually went a different direction and, like, actually told the story. And maybe, admittedly, it'd be less of a horror movie because it's the ending that kind of really makes it a horror movie. It, it was all building to this. Sure. But part of me is like what would this be a better movie almost if it did actually have a like a happier ending where mm-hmm. he does ultimately make a choice that sends him on a better path where he does take the help that's offered by lisa he does you know do something that improves his life and doesn't just send him going further down this path mm-hmm. um 
I don't know. I I I kind of because I, 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 I love a dark end. I love a miserable ending. I do when it when it feels <laughs> like the movie was going there the whole time. But I mm-hmm. think almost this just felt a little bit too like. I guess going back to that word real, it felt a little bit too real that I was mm-hmm. kind of hoping that he wouldn't become a murderer, <laughs> but he did. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. So his his poor old old mother is is lying dying at the bottom of the stairs. Mm-hmm. Lisa's almost been killed, and he's completely ruined his own life. Uh, completely because he's like he's he's dying. He's literally dying. It's not just that he's ruined it. He's dying. It's ending. Yeah. It's over. Kaput. Uh, <laughs> um. I mean, what did you what did you, what did you make of the whole like last like section of the movie? Uh, I I mean, kind of like I mean, it's similar to I, I I guess a lot of stuff about how I felt like during the rest of the movie. Like it's uh certainly compelling, like you know, and I am very interested in uh you know invested in it. That like um yeah, like I'm like okay, I'm kind of on the edge of my seat. Like what's gonna happen next? And and yeah, like I was kind of thinking like all right, is there any way he's going to be able to come back from this? At some point, is he going to, like, kind of, like, rise up and, like, you know, snatch whatever, you know, thing is going on in his head, like, a, you know, break away from Andy or whatever, but, um, no, it doesn't happen. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, like, it, it's compelling, but it is just very dark and sad and miserable, uh, which, uh, I mean, again, like, depending on your mood or whatever it can maybe it might be more effective but um yeah it, it's uh i i was feeling like more depressed than anything <laughs> yeah and like i said i i i enjoy movies that are dark and have dark mm-hmm. endings and you know i i you know i love henry portrait of a serial killer i love sure. stuff like that that's like a and maybe yeah part of this is a compliment almost that i was invested that i did care i was feeling tense i was rooting for a happier ending which means mm-hmm. that i did care it means that in some level it was it was working it just yeah, it, I, i'm not sure like how much i enjoyed than, it by the end though <laughs> right yeah I, yeah like it, there is something to say that you know this is very different from a you know like some generic hollywood uh horror movie where like you just don't care about what's going on because it's very generic and the characters aren't interesting uh this it's like oh yeah the characters are very interesting and they're very fleshed out and you are invested in them but not in the most enjoyable way (laughs) i suppose yeah um because i I would definitely say that i I don't have much of a desire to watch this again i don't think sure yeah Uh, yeah i can't uh, really imagine like uh being in the mood <laughs> to pop this in yeah it's which makes it a really weird thing to rate it's a really weird thing to like sort of gauge mm-hmm. how much i would recommend it uh yeah. i mean i, I think at, at the very least it's better than a lot of the vod movies that we come in here and like just are just it's just dull or it's just this or it's just that um mm-hmm. i think the direction's strong enough that i never really felt what is obviously a very low budget movie where a lot of yeah. it takes place in a house mm-hmm. or even in the basement specifically um I, I never felt those limitations because the story was and the the camera work was doing all the right things to keep me invested in what was going on so i wasn't thinking about oh this feels like it's held back it felt like mm-hmm. every place we had to go with the characters we went and mm-hmm. and so i never felt the limitations of the budget so and that's something that i feel a lot with these vod movies these days like it's, oh, it's yeah. something for some reason a lot of low budget movies these days I feel the budget in a negative way that I don't in a lot of older movies that are low budget. And mm-hmm. there's probably a bunch of different reasons for that, but uh, I, I do appreciate it when I, I don't feel it now because I, I do feel it in so many of them. But Oh yeah, totally. So, yeah, I'll, I'll give it that. So, I, I mean, so bizarrely, I think I have a lot. Of, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe the actual like, writing of the, the psychology of this and mm-hmm. what it's trying to say about this character because uh, I'm not so sure it actually is saying much other than just here's an example mm-hmm. of how someone becomes this and here's an example of how toxic their own mind is to them because that's the thing that Will Wheaton kind of is. He's kind mm-hmm. of this toxic friend who was, who is actually selfish and doesn't want him to be happy. But of course, that's mm-hmm. actually just part of David's own mind. So it's his own mind that's being toxic. It's his own mind that's you know refusing to let him be happy. Yeah. So I wonder, yeah, like maybe with like a someone else to help with the script perhaps it could have went somewhat mm-hmm. further and it maybe felt more poignant than it did because i think it doesn't do anything mm-hmm. that feels like 
disingenuous, but it doesn't necessarily make sure. any sort of point that made me go, "Oh God, that's such a great like like thing that it's like giving me True. in terms of what it's telling yeah. me." Yeah. Yeah. Um. And it and it's tough because uh, like, you know, it, I, I don't know if you think of like other, um ways to approach the movie like um like oh yeah maybe it is a, a supernatural thing and it's more of a thing where yeah david has to you know overcome it and prevail and, and fight against it or whatever it's like you could certainly do it but then yeah it does kind of feel like it's betraying what you know this movie ultimately is you know so i don't know it's tough to say if like something like that would be better um i don't know i think if, if it... Without changing too much, I would say maybe the, the one little element that's missing from this is the sense that it, I think it's supposed to feel like a tragedy. You know, when mm-hmm. you watch like a story where this is always going to end badly and it's about how it happens and how you understand all the all the parts of the journey that gets them to that point. Obviously, you wish they didn't happen and you wish mm-hmm. that other choices were made at certain times, but you understand all those those beats along the story to get to the tragic ending. And if mm-hmm. there's anything that I would say is missing from this is that I don't know if it actually felt that way throughout most of the movie to the point where, I, you know, I, like I say, I don't, I don't know if I necessarily felt like there was much of, uh, like a, you know, a, a punk, you know, a, a full stop. There, there wasn't like a, like a, an ending point with an exclamation point at the end. It's, it felt like okay, that was the point at the end of the movie. It, it felt mm-hmm. like it, it went down a path that you know, obviously wasn't super surprising necessarily, but it didn't do something where I feel like it made a big point at the end. It just kind of, oh, and that's how this yeah. ends uh you sure. know uh whereas yeah so <laughs> I, I i guess what i'm trying to say is that the arc of david feels a little bit simplistic i guess is maybe what i'm saying well i think what's weird about it is you know he starts off as i i feel like being very nice and endearing like when we first meet him you know like we like him and everything um and then he's introduced to yeah this like negative element uh in his life but also a very positive element and you feel like the arc would be yeah him being taken under this bad influence but then uh this other influence kind of winning out and him triumphing over it but instead uh it's just like oh no he there's no redeeming qualities for him like by the end which is mm. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you can't do a story like that, but it it does feel kind of weird. Like, yeah, yeah, actually, that's a good way of putting it. Is that there's, there's there's no sympathy at the end. I, I think at the ending, mm-hmm. he can still like go down a dark path, and we can still feel really sad that he's chosen this path. But mm-hmm. I don't know if I actually feel sad that he's went down the wrong path at the end. I was hoping throughout the movie that he would take the right, make the right, you know, choice and whatever. But at the end of the movie, I don't necessarily mm-hmm. feel like I'm really sad because the character that I cared about chose the wrong thing so now i feel like yeah. it's a tragic ending it's more just that he did it and now i feel really kind of apathetic to the ending does that, does that make sense i get it yeah 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 i, I don't feel like a great like because I, I think if if it, when this is done well and you do have this tragedy sort of story that plays out whatever it may be i think mm-hmm. what what you're supposed to feel at the end typically is you still feel very empathetic towards the character and you feel really mm. sad that the life turned out this way or whatever happened in the story happened. At the end of this, I don't think I feel sympathy for him. I, I think that goes away oh, no. in the last, like, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. And because of that, yeah, it left me feeling kind of, I don't know, ambivalent at the end. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, a weird one to <laughs> to, to recommend or, or, you know, slash rate. Uh <laughs> Which is why I'm going to make you read it first because I'm cruel like that. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so I think I'm going to give it a six. Um, I think uh, again, like on a technical level, everything was done uh really well, and like you stated before, like um, you know, this is a VOD movie, but it doesn't really have that kind of annoying VOD look. Like it doesn't feel like super digitalized and like have like this really annoying like effects or acting or whatever so it it does actually like look uh like a pretty good movie so uh, on a technical level you know it's very sound and uh again the story and the characters are you know it's hard to say that they're not like 
you know interesting or compelling like you do again get very invested into you know their whole story it's just that uh at the end of the day it is a very dark sad story um that you know it, it it's not like movies shouldn't be that but it's yeah yeah it kind of makes it not the most like fun watch not the most uh yeah <laughs> enjoyable thing uh in the world and who knows maybe on a, a different year when <laughs> you know the world isn't so miserable maybe you know that can be a bit more forgiving but uh i wonder yeah <laughs> i wonder if, if if maybe i just felt there was more foreshadowing of a dark turn throughout the movie mm. i would have felt better about it because it felt seeded because no yeah. i'm thinking about it i don't know if there was any point in the movie like b beforehand that i thought like it was building up to him just straight up being a killer at the end yeah yeah, and maybe that's what's missing as well. I don't know. Uh, sex sounds good, even though I do think there's elements of it that are kind of above that. Yeah, I, yeah, sex sounds about right. Uh, I, I just saw some of what you were saying about about it looking decent. Yeah, it looks like a real movie, and that mm. sounds like a. Uh, I feel like I'm 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 being a dick by like throwing a lot of other movies under the bus, but there's so many movies we watch that don't look like real movies. <laughs> so, I'm yeah. I'm. You know, I'm going to give it the the real movie look seal of approval. I was watching uh, some movies on Prime today, and my uh, reaction was just like, "Huh." So I guess anyone can just upload anything on Prime. Huh? <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> much. There's some really weird stuff on Prime if you start digging into the the yeah. like. See if you go into like the sci-fi or horror section, you eventually get to like weird like soft core dinosaur porn and stuff like that. <laughs> it's like it's so bizarre. The uh... <clears throat> uh, the problem like especially with like the horror stuff is they always have like pretty good posters so like i'll see mm. this poster and i'll be like hey cool sign me up uh and then you watch it and it's like oh I'm, it looks like i'm watching a youtube video or something like what happened to like <laughs> this weird like poster i don't know yeah but hey so there you go that's rent a pal um so if you made it this far in review please put the word I, I, I don't have a, an obvious one here. Tim, do you want to help me out and give me a word? <laughs> See, I'm struggling. Be a pal and give me a, a, a lifeline here. What was uh, when he hurts his back and he has to... They give him something to sit on the ice. Was it oh. tater tots? Yeah, because because I was confused as well because the guy comes out when they're sitting with their milkshakes or whatever. He's like, yeah, I need those tots back. And he yeah. gives him the back of the tots. And I was, he gives him back this big bag of tots. And I'm like... Wait, because I, I I thought it was like, wait, did his credit card get claimed? I'm like, oh no, it was like a, a cold bag of, okay, I get it. It was for his yeah. ass because he landed was, his ass. <laughs> I, I was confused for a second as well, but I was like, afterwards, I was like, oh wait, that's actually a pretty good joke. Yeah. But, yeah maybe uh, people can put tots in the comments. <laughs> yeah, tots, yes. The word tots. Put tots <laughs> in the comments. Uh, and Tim's going to post for the thumbnail, so here we go. Mm -hmm. um, three, uh, put your head down, there you go. Three, mm -hmm. two, one, pause. <laughs> there we go uh wonderful so that is us uh you can of course let us know what you thought of the movie if you've seen it in the comments below please do a like and subscribe and all those other youtubey yeah. things they all help as does patreon.com slash tv as we mentioned earlier uh get us on the twitters at streams midnight and you know get some various updates uh as time goes on and hey maybe you know Maybe worth being on that Twitter, uh, early 2021, as uh, Tim gives us, I'm sure, all the exclusive Screams updates to his life. Sure. Um, <laughs> as, as this would go on. Um, but, yeah, that is uh, that has been rent pal and this has been Screams After Midnight. So thank you once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching Scary Movies, guys, and we will see you next time.